Kiki e Tomix Kanatuni. Good morning. It is hours before the dawn, about five o'clock in the AM on Friday, December 27th, 2019, in the lunar cycle Nisami Kokomiatoks, the long night's moon. And I need to be on my way to Metropolis this morning to jump on a plane and fly to San Francisco, meet, meet up with my buddy down there. But, wouldn't you know it, before I can leave town, I've got a skunk call. <laughs> Yesterday afternoon, morning, I kind of messaged and phoned around to the few clients that I still have going and let them know, close the traps, reminded them, some of them I've already told, close the traps because I'm going to San Francisco for a few days. And then late last night, around midnight or so, I got a message from my one client that uh, when they went to go close the trap, there's a skunk in there. So I needed to sleep. I needed to catch four hours sleep or whatever last night. And uh, so I did that before coming out this morning and we're gonna go pick it up. Same place as I got that raccoon the other day. Um, but I'm really hoping not to get too stinky because I gotta I gotta climb on a small plane, you know, in a couple of hours. <laughs> and that could be interesting for the other, you know, passengers if I smell of skunk. But sometimes it's hard to avoid. We'll see. We'll see how it goes today. But yeah, starting off with the skunk pickup, and then we'll make our way to San Francisco. <laughs> Good morning, Skunky. Yeah, I'm here to take you out of there. Hold on. Hold on. So I've arrived at the Calgary International Airport a little bit the worse for wear. Um, <laughs> of course, I asked for an adventure, so, you know, the gods are going to give me one. Um, as I was driving along Deer, Deerfoot, the Jeep started making funky sounds, started feeling like it was shaky a little bit. I didn't know if I was just imagining it or if there was something going on, you know, with the transmission or something again. And, but when I pulled in at the airport parking garage, right away it started rattling really bad like I thought it was going to break down before I even found a, a parking stall. So I was lucky, fortunate in one way, that I got off a of Deerfoot alive, <laughs> but uh, rather unlucky in another way, which is when I come back at like midnight on Monday, all I've got waiting for me is a broken Jeep that can't drive and some kind of huge expense and ordeal to go through. 
Um, so, yeah, the adventure's on for sure. But off to San Francisco, in any case. Okay, I've arrived in San Francisco. It's just past noon. And I've got to try to get myself a ticket on the BART that'll take me into the downtown. Let's see. Where do I want to go? So I'm here. Probably need to go like Civic Center Union Plaza. And ultimately I need to find my way over to buy the um, botanical gardens. So. Alright, let's get a ticket. So, my transportation segment is done, and I think the botanical gardens where I'm going to meet my friend is just down the road here. So there's a charge to get in. I better phone my friend and see where he is and if he actually wants me to go in there or not. Yeah, I'll give him a ring quick. All right, turns out my friend is not at the botanical garden right now. Gave him a call when I saw they have a ticket office and I would have had to pay admission to get in. Glad I didn't pay it. But, um, He's at his place, which is up the street here. So we're gonna go find Darren. <laughs> I think we got about three blocks to go, maybe. It's very cool. Looks looks very San Francisco around here, for sure. Thought I recognized the yellow scarf. <laughs> What's oh. up, man? It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> wild, but the coons come through this tiny, tiny little crack between these houses down here. Oh yeah. And this used to, this all used to be a beautiful old backyard, and this guy like bought it and paved it and turfed it when the old lady died. Gee. And it really sucked. There was like a 40-year-old avocado tree there that the raccoons used to love. And now it's just fucked, right? I, I think they still come through here because it's a gateway to these other yards. Right. But, uh, and they have, I have seen them washing in there. Sometimes the, um, the mama 
will like tip the bowl over and the babies will like sit downstairs, you know? But yeah, this is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I hope you can't hear me, but he's an idiot, right? This used to be a beautiful... It was a really nice... Old backyard, all, oh. like, with, you know, lavender and the avocado tree. And, and the avocado tree finally started producing fruit, which was a huge boon for the raccoons. Yeah, I bet. They love those avocados. And he just came in and leveled it, turfed it, and paved it. Oh. We heard that he was like a gardener. <laughs> Huh? I guess that's his idea. Well, that's, that's how some people garden. Yeah, apparently. Patios. So that's part of how you make videos, huh? Oh, yes. So that thing, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I gotta check into that stuff, because... Hold on, this is weird. Did it rain? No. Something must have been... How could of, there be water here? It's a lot of moisture on that roof, too. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that, that could be from rain. I don't understand what that moisture on the stairs is from. I've been up here a long time. It used to be Tai Chi up here a long time ago. It used to be gravel. Yeah, it's a good view. <laughs> here, you can see far. This tree, my, my landlord's probably gonna, he's eventually gonna try to take it down, but I don't know, right after that. Mm. But he hates this tree, I love this tree. Because this tree shields us from a lot of traffic noise. And they trim it, well, they call it trimming. They usually catastrophically just like chop it, you know, chop the branches out of it, but this tree's amazing. That is a, you, is it madrone or? It's eucalyptus. Yeah, eucalyptus. Yeah, that whole, all that whole forest up there is eucalyptus. And some idiot, some city idiots decided that they were going to take all those trees down. <laughs> Which, by the way, if they did that, yeah. it would be catastrophic because it would just be mudslides. Right? Is it actually like forest all yeah, through there? Yeah, pretty much. That's cool. Yeah, it is. I've been all up through there. They did take some of them down on that ridge right there, you can oh. see. But yeah, I've been all up, all up in that a long time ago when it, when it was easy for me to climb. And there's a couple of gardens at the base of it. Like, see those, see that little fence down there above the, above the rooftops, that little brown fence? Oh yeah. That's uh, above one of the gardens that we'll visit. That's like the San Francisco League of Urban Gardeners garden. Cool. And then there's a really cool place further down where that stand of trees is beyond these trees. That uh, it's white crane where you can like actually get gardening plots. Uh huh. So like community gardens. Yeah, that's thing. that's pretty cool. Uh, you can see the Golden Gate. Oh yeah, yeah. You right? could see the. Uh, I could see it on the plane coming in too. Oh, I bet. I was wondering how come it's the Golden Gate? And it's red. Why is yeah, it gold? Yeah. Okay. So that's really funny. <laughs> it's really funny because yesterday I saw some meme thing about like parents <laughs> taking pictures of their little children that are having a, t a tantrum over something and then like writing what the tantrum about. Yeah. Is about and one of them was the Golden Gate Bridge isn't actually golden and the kids on the ground. Like, <laughs> you know. Another one. So yeah, this is this circle of trees I'm really close with. When I come here, I you know I greet all the trees, but I also I, I like go down in the ground and I travel around the circle, mm. right? In my you know in my imagination, in my heart. But yeah, you can see like this thing has just worked. Oh yeah, bamboo. bamboo. Yeah, there's <laughs> actually a bamboo forest here too. Really? But you can see like it's just been worked. Uh -huh. The woodpecker has really worked this, this tree. Yeah, it's still got blooms. Yep. In the end of December. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And uh, these salvias, who knows, is this one of them? No, I don't think that. I mean, it, that might be a salvia, but it's not the kind I'm thinking about. Some of these salvias, you can get quite a bit of nectar out of them. There's two major sources of food around here for herons. Obviously, they will eat um, minnows, mm. right? Little guppies and stuff, which all the ponds have a lot of guppies in them. But the main, I think their main uh, 
this bird is like completely unconcerned about us being here pretty much <laughs> and then it was like wait a minute maybe i should be concerned about this um so there's a grebe right there right yeah it's something different that's a grebe uh so mainly what's in here for the the blue herons are uh crawdads right oh, yeah. they eat crawdads they eat minnows or little you know i don't those fish don't become big fish, so I don't understand. What are they, guppies or something? I don't know. Mm. There's lots of them in here, and the carp eat those too. Um, normally, there's a bunch of turtles on those rocks sunning themselves. Oh, really? Yeah, there's there's a lot of turtles. Turtles in here. Yeah, and they, and they are pretty social. They get together and hang out together. Uh, and then the other main food for the... Uh, the herons is uh, yeah ducks don't do this at home okay. <laughs> no no <laughs> oh they'll come right they'll actually come right up to you no no we don't have that yeah these these ducks have been fed right yeah if you just kind of do this it's like he's i don't want to tease him but yeah yeah but yeah the, the white the white cheeks will do the same thing yeah oh yeah they'll come right up to you <laughs> yeah, it's coming running. Coming yep. running. The other thing that um, the blue the, the herons feed on here is gophers. Mm. I've seen them gulping down gophers like they were candy. Literally. You know? <laughs> Which that most of the people who come here find very surprising because they just don't expect <laughs> they don't expect fish to pay attention to human beings mm. right yeah but these ones have a long history of yeah, synanthropy sin yeah you know, they've been they've been synanthropes for a long long time so and, and there aren't any humans here that hunt them or fish for them so they have no reason to be concerned about humans at all <laughs> well they they trim the roots because the roots become very matted and they make these gigantic, extremely heavy, you know, five, six hundred pound things that could hurt a tourist. Wow. If you were lucky. If it fell, <laughs> if, if it broke off and fell yeah, on you? Yeah, if it just like accidentally broke off. Uh, you could, you could, but yeah, you can see like this stuff's really, when it's thick, it's really heavy. Yeah. And they oh. almost make like dreads. Yeah, that's right? cool. These are like, um, yeah, these are like the plant version of dreadlocks. It <laughs> <laughs> never occurred to me before just now, but yeah. Yeah, that's I've pretty. Seen, um, I've seen hanging columns of this mm. that definitely weigh like seven, eight hundred pounds. Jesus. Right? They're like, you know, these things are really modest. Yeah. Really modest. But you can feel like if you just like grab this, right? It's not super heavy, but it probably weighs forty pounds. It's becoming wood. Yeah, yeah. And this too. See this is more like what I'm talking about. Feel yeah. this. Right. Except imagine Oh it, geez, yeah. Imagine it like this wide, right? <laughs> and like this thick. Yeah. You know, it weighs like half a ton or something. Yeah, it wouldn't be good to... Well, I think it kind of would be good, but... Could... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there's lots of places here. Not so much right here for some reason, that's okay. All we're seeing here really are... Oh, there we go. See those? You know what those are? See those? What's Little that? jumpy things? See that? Oh yeah. You know what that is? No. It's a sand flea. Yeah. And if you lift up the loam here, you'll see thousands of them. Right? Thousands of them. Huh. And it's very uncommon to see these more... See, look. Look at this. What is this? Right? This isn't dirt. Mm-hmm. This was all... This whole park was all sand dunes. That's pretty wild. And so when you lift up the loam here, you don't see ordinary... Uh, insect life that you would expect to see what you see are thousands of these little sand fleas 
<laughs> which is just crazy. But it's because look, this isn't this isn't dirt. This is sand. And these all this whole park, all the way up, like all the way to the front of it, another mile in that direction, this all of this was sand dunes. So this place was invented. Uh. Right? There was no soil here at all. <laughs> and it's hard on the trees, a lot of the trees, because, you know, it's not like the roots give them a lot of purchase. Mm. So when it gets very wet and then there's wind, mm. the trees just fall over. Huh. Um, I've seen lots of huge trees here just fall over. And it's surrounded by a lot of magnolias. So yeah, this is one of my very favorite places. Yeah, it looks, looks very Shinto-y. Yeah, yeah, it is. This, uh, oh, you can smell some of the magnolias. Yeah. A little bit. And this tree right here goes crazy with, with little white blossoms in the springtime. It actually, it looks like it's getting ready to do it. It's got all those buds, right? Mm. Which I'm not too sure why it's having them. I don't, yeah, it's, it's budding. It's budding in, in late December. I don't, <laughs> it does happen. Yeah. What is that? That looks crazy. 